Hey there everyone, this is Yui. Welcome to episode 5 of FTB Academy. Today we're going to dive deeper into Botania. See where we get. I want to automate the runic altar. So let's get to it. Oh, too many clicks. So, I got a bunch of crafting stuff laid out. Before that, I need some electrum because I need to make an energy cell because we're going to get slightly into power today also. And the con this thing, redstone conductance coil requires electrum. So to make electrum, I'm going to turn off the lever again so it doesn't auto export. It's going to be gold and silver, one to one ratio, and that'll alloy up into what we need. So while that's going, I'm going to make some more stuff up. Uh, four iron ingots plus four sticks plus black quartz will get you an iron casing. You can also find these in villages. There's an actual addition's house that gets added by the mod. Now if you surround that with four ingots and four redstone, you'll get the atomic reconstructor. This is kind of your starting point into actually addition's machines. This needs power to run and you're going to want a redstone torch. So I'm going to set this up out here because I have a, a specific idea that I want to do in terms of initial power generation at least. I'm going to put this uh, right there is good. So if you notice it says redstone mode deactivation, you want to take your redstone torch in your hand, right click it, and then it'll change it to pulse mode. That means it's not going to sit there wasting energy when you're not using it. So it's important to do that. Now we're going to take a button, and that's how we're going to pulse it. This should be alloyed. Yep. So we have our electrum. We're going to turn that on, let it turn into ingots. And now this will go until, I don't know how far it goes, but I know it goes until it hits a block usually, so I just put the button right on top of it. That way the pulse will only go to this block here. Now let's go craft up some more stuff. I have some pipes. Which is just lead, glass, and redstone. These are the cheap ones. You can upgrade them with Invar. Actually, maybe I should. Do I have any? Nope. Never mind. I'm not doing it. And then... Yeah, that's good for that. So I want, I'm just going to put it right here. I'm going to put an energy cell on top of it. So let's see, I need that electrum though. And probably some lead. G cell. Need glass, of course, we need glass. I've been going through so much glass lately. So to make a gear, it's just four ingots in a kind of circle. That'll make you most of the gears by default, unless the recipes have been changed. Alternatively, you can cast them out if you want to make a gear cast. I don't know. I don't think we have a stone gear, though. Usually, you have access to a stone gear. Oh, we do. Okay. And use that for your cast if you're going to do that. And then you could just cast it straight out in the smeltery. But since these ingots require, uh, since these gears require four ingots, it's the same as going through the smeltery or just crafting it by hand. And then I need frame, the coil, the energy cell. This is just the low tier one. This will go on top. Here. It should auto export on the bottom, which it does. Now we're going to make this guy, Man of Flux Field. If I remember correctly, I should just be able to. Uh, we'll put it up higher, right here. So, what this will do is it will convert mana into RF. Since we have unlimited mana being generated already, I don't have to worry about any sort of generation of power. Not the linking tool, so let's take our wand. I made extra spreader here just for that. 
So it should pulse in here, should generate RF, and then it goes in here. Not going to be the fastest generation, but for what I need it for right now, it's going to be sufficient. I can expand it in the future. My backpack is full, but I'm going to put those in there. All right. Moving on, I need... No, that, that's... That's in a moment. We need to make some of this. Restonia crystals. So, this atomic reconstructor will let you do a good number of things. It's also really good for enchanting later on. Because you can get a disenchanting lens. Right here. But you need the empowered stuff. We'll, we'll probably get there eventually. Just definitely not today. So what we're going to make is some Restonia Crystal, which if you look at the recipe, you can craft it with these shards, which you can find in caves. While you're spelunking down below, there's actually addition generated caves, which will have grass and a tree way down low. Or you can throw a piece of redstone in front of it, and it will convert it using some power. So to see that, you just throw the redstone down, hit the button, and it converts it over. Now, there's a lot of other recipes, so if you're having trouble finding, say, Prismarine, I know there's a recipe for Prismarine in here, just using quartz. Or if you can't find nether wart, for example, it's just a mushroom. Soul sand. You can change rotten flesh into leather. There's a few things. But most of them is to get this uh, crafting ingredients. So with that... We need to make a coil, which is just black quartz, which if you don't have black quartz, then you probably haven't been mining, because you should have a ton of it. Initially, you can just smelt it. That only gets you one to one, but now that we slightly have power generation, we can make a crusher, which will double your output. But also double output for other ores too. Now we're going to change this to an advanced coil, which will just take a piece of gold. Turned into nuggets. I know, this has nothing to do with Botania yet, but we're getting there. All that, so if you get Payless Crystals, which are lap piece thrown in the Reconstructor. Then you put your advanced coil, a dropper, five pieces of cobblestone, you get a precision dropper. Which acts like a dropper, but it's more, it doesn't spit the items out like random velocities. Okay, now we have iron, redstone, we're making servo. Just regular gear crafting. Oh, same here. Now, if you have tin, glass, you take your copper, you get your device frame. I am... no, I'm not. There we go. And just like that, hopper, two tin, that device frame, that servo, and those two iron gears, you get a vacuum. This will, by default, when it's lit up like that on the front purple, looks like a nether portal, kind of. It will pick up items in a pretty large range. I think it's like uh, the size of a farm, so 9x9 nine nine area, or 4 block radius. And it will, by default at least, automatically export items to the top. So if I throw bread down, it'll pick it up. Throw it over here, throw it back here. I can even throw it outside, because that's within the 4 blocks. So it doesn't need line of sight to the item. Alright, so now, with this, that's all I wanted. We got into the atomic reconstructor for the precision dropper, and we need the vacuum you later. With that, and these items, so two inventories, a hopper, the precision dropper, the vacuum emulator, two building blocks, dispenser, a wand of the forest, an extra one, so keep yours with you. You need five redstone dust, a redstone torch, three repeaters, 
one comparator, a lever, now then a hovering glass, hovering hourglass, which is made with mana steel and two mana glass, and then gold and redstone. Mana glass is the same thing, you just toss it in the pool. And then a piece of sand. That's for the hourglass. So if we take all this junk, and then we can start setting some nice stuff up. So first thing we're going to do is take out the block under the runic altar. We're going to replace that with a dispenser facing up. We're going to put the wand of the forest in there. And then I'm going to replace that block. This hourglass is going to go into... Since I have my mana coming from here, now I moved it because I set up two more mana pools for later. So this mana pool is designated for the altar. I want to keep this spot clear, so I'm going to put my hourglass here. Piece of redstone here. That's going to feed into a block that has a torch on the other side. The dropper is going to go right there facing the altar, right next to that block. Oh, we need that. Let me just borrow that torch again. So once again, we have to change this to pulse mode. Then we need a hopper. That feeds into the dropper. One of the crates can go on top of it. Okay, so what this will do is when we put the sand in here, it's going to tick every second, which is going to trigger that dispenser down below, and it's going to let this hopper feed items in. And and uh, it'll trigger the uh, dropper. Now we need a comparator coming out the opposite side of that redstone dust. When the altar is crafting, it will let out a signal strength of one here. So we could take that and we can feed it like that and like that. So now when it's crafting, it's going to light up this redstone, which will get strengthened by the repeater, which, ignore this side for a minute, it'll come up here on the end of this block and it will give it a redstone signal to lock the hopper. So it'll stop moving items. Now, going this side, we're going to change, we're going to fall in the water first, but I'm going to change this to two ticks and four ticks. Play around with this, you might need to. I'm going to put the vacuum elator here. I'm going to open it up, change it to high redstone mode, so by default it is off. The other crate is going to go on top of it. I think I got that from when I was testing it. And then I need, I need a rune. I already started crafting runes and this is why I wanted to automate it. So with an empty hand, shift and right click and you'll come up with a GUI to change your filter settings. So I'm going to change it to whitelist a rune and it's going to be set to ignore metadata and NBT. So this should pick up any Botania runes. No, I don't need that. And then a lever goes on the back of this block. I do this so I can turn it on and this hopper is locked so I can fill up this crate. Alternatively, you can get rid of the lever and use, say, a uh, trap chest. But this, the storage crate holds a lot more. So I could queue up a lot more runes. Without worrying about it and then with that all we got to do is put this sand in here and it'll start going now the problem is is that clicking noise click 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 so every second they so could take out the sand and put it on the ground until you actually need it using the draconic evolution place key which is by default p but that's it this is now ready to go. 
So what'll happen is let's let's just craft one up. Or we'll craft more than one up. Where'd that go? That was this and that. We need butter eyes and oak. Those. Some of these, something's coming. And then I don't know which of those, but we'll need them. So make sure your lever's on. Let's find out what we're trying to craft. So I already started crafting the basic ones, which are water, fire, earth, air. Now I'm going to craft the season ones. Which Oh, way. Which require runes. So, uh, since these require runes and since this picks up runes, that's why there are two repeaters here with a slight delay. That's just so that this is only active when it is crafting and not while it's placing. You're so rude. Okay, so let's see here. Spring is going to be fire, water, wheat. And the saplings. Fire and water. Okay. So since I am doing two recipes, I also need living rock. Which is in here. Okay. And by default this this hopper is locked, but if this is ticking it would start pulling out. Now the trick to doing this is the living rock can't be the last ingredient. So you could do do it any way you want. Like these are the ingredients needed to craft one root, but living rock can't be last. It can be first, it doesn't matter. Oh actually, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter either way. Because we have the runes also. Which are fire and water. I'm just gonna put the runes up front. There, there. Okay. Let's see. And then there's so this inventory will empty from the top left to the right, and then it'll go down a row, and it'll keep going until it reaches the end. So really, you could stack it like this if you want. All right. That was. No spring. No summer is air and earth. I'm just gonna put them down. Spring, summer, sand, melon. And as long as the living rock is not last. So there's one rune, two, three, four. What's next? That was summer. Wait, did I get the slime? Nope. That's weird, but that. Sh oh, wait. No, that's not going to. Dang it. Air. There we go. And now, though, if this does, if you do mess this up, it's going to mess up pretty catastrophically. It's just going to start dumping all the items into the altar. And then you're going to have to manually clear it out. So let's get air, fire, air, fire. And then living rock. driving me crazy because it doesn't map. There. Then we'll put a small separation in there so you can see it better. Okay, so that's that. And then lastly, now we got autumn, winter. 
which is earth and water. Earth, water, cake, snow, and wool. There we go. That should cover all of them. Let's test it out. Get the sand, throw it in there, flip the lever and hope for the best. We'll go from this side. So you can see the redstone tray there. And then once that finishes up, oh, it should hit it with the wand. The vacuumulator should pick up the runes, and then it should start crafting the next recipe. So when you're crafting runes that require runes as the ingredients, it will spit those runes back out. So we're not going to lose those fire and water runes there. Okay, yeah, almost. They, they take a while. Let's see. So I don't think we have any other timer clock, maybe. There's sometimes a redstone clock. No. And I don't think there's any sound mufflers. Oh, I got my magnet ring. I can pull that off. There it goes, and then that'll just keep going until it finishes them all. So while that's going, we're going to come over here, we're going to make, we're going to get started on Terra Steel. To make that, you're going to need this terrestrial agglomeration plate. Oh, well, you know, okay. We're going to pause that and make a... I need a pearl. I need a mana rune for that. So just one thing to know though is the first ingredient of the next recipe will be in the hopper, so... Eh. Yeah, yeah. I see you. There we go. Five of these. And then... Let me just take out one of these. We have fire, water... There, we'll take that out for now. And we need that mana. Terrestrial, terrestrial. There we go. This one. Uh, we need a block of mana steel. Easy enough. I made a ton of iron up. You can drop the blocks in. You don't have to drop the ingots in every time. And then we just need this rune. I'm just gonna put... Eh, it doesn't matter. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Alright. Now we can keep progressing. So you're gonna need four uh, I used them. You're going to need four blocks of lapis. And you're going to need five living rock. But oh, we're also going to need sparks. So let's make those up. Sparks are just made with gold nuggets in the middle. Blaze powder on the side. And then petals up and down. Which we'll use... Uh, that's good. We're going to need seven of them. One for each mana pool, plus 
one for the plate. I can put that away. And then starting to get a little cramped over here. So to take these, you just right click on the mana pool. Then I'll put the spark above them. And you can right click on a spark with your wand of the forest when it is in function mode. And it'll show you all the sparks it's connected to. Make, make sure that they're close enough. Alright. Move on. I can put it here. In a clear out of 3x3. Three three, make an X with the living rock. And fill in the four sides with the lapis. Then the plate goes in the middle. Spark goes on top of it. Hard to see, but it's right above it. Then we need three things. You need mana pearls, mana diamonds, and mana steel. And then you say goodbye to your, your mana pool. So put this in here for now. Alright. So I want... One, two, three is good for now. So to do this, make sure you take off your ring of magnetization and make sure you stay away from it until it's done. If not, you... Any mana that goes into it and then gets cancelled, you lose. So just right-click the plate with the three parts. You'll get these little particle effects. The more mana pools you have going into it, the faster it takes. But if you check your mana pools, they go way down. So we'll use... I think it takes uh, either half a mana pool or a quarter of a mana pool. So it takes quite a bit. See, look at it go. It just takes a huge amount of mana. And that's how you make Terra Steel. Which we're gonna use which we can use to right now upgrade our rings if we want to. You hit uses on that, just a single bar will make that. But we'll go and do convert one into nuggets. And then we'll see if I actually I don't even remember. Let's see here. We should make this stuff here. Two mana pools. I already made them, but I'll just make two more. I'm not going to use those two. Let's see here. We need pylons. Three of those. One of them. Did it save that stuff? Yeah. Alright. Mana. Two more diamonds. Oh man. Ender pearls are my weakness right now. I don't have well, I've got two. I've got two. That's it. So if that's not enough, then tough nuggets. Mana steel. Four of those. Do do do. Alright. Oh, we should be able to right-click on him to get an achievement. Oh, he stole my sword. Isn't that nice? Give me that back. There. You don't need that. I'm missing gold. Uh, I didn't plan ahead this far. I just wanted to automate the... Whatchamacallit. The altar. Is it still going, or did it jack up? I think it's done. Nice. So now you can just take out the sand and just put it on the ground. And that'll make it quiet. 
and I went all that way for two gold when I need four. Not that this one, craft one of them, craft another one of them, craft two of those. Now we need some glowstone dust. Three. Those and we need a core. All right, and then we need living wood. And then, as proof of concept, we need two mana steel. Okay, so you're gonna want to place your two pools about three blocks apart. They they don't have to be exact. Mana or the elven gateway core is gonna go in between them. On each side of that is going to be two living wood. Pretty sure it's living wood for that. It doesn't say, but yeah. Oh, it wants us to make... What was that? This. Which is... Oh, it wants us to make a lot more. These corners can be empty. It's going to be one living wood. Glimmer, living wood. So the glimmer wood goes in the middle on each side. And I'm not wearing my slime boots. There. So these corners can be empty. Not that one. And this one. And then the pylons go on top of these mana pools. And that's it. Now you take your... Well, you probably don't, actually. You need more mana than this. It's taking its time. Do you not have line of sight? Let's do this the cheaty way. We're going to empty, if you shift right click the mana pool when it is in bind mode, it will change it. the arrow. You see it changing? When it's facing away from the mana pool, you can take your ring, you can throw it down there, it'll suck up the mana that's in the pool. That's going into the ring. We need about, I think, we need a bit. And then if you just toss the ring over here, it'll start filling up this mana pool. I'm going to switch this back over. Then I'll forget. Because that one should have enough. We'll find out. And then to start up the gate, all you do is you right click the core with your wand. There you go, it takes about half a mana pool, combined. And now we can, as per the tutorial before, you could just throw in, say, two of those, get one of them. So now we're, we're at least that far. So we'll call it there for now, so if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.